Hi everyone, I'm here to help Hilary, who's getting married, and she saw this design that I created quite a number of years ago, it is a couple of years ago anyway, and she really loved the, the colours of the roses, she loved the candles, and she sort of kind of liked the box, but it wasn't really what she wanted to use for on her tables. So she asked if I could show her how to do something like this with the roses and that colourway, incorporating an angel that was flying. I think that's an angel. Yes, that is an angel. Isn't she beautiful? I just love her. And I want you to know, Hilary, that I went to quite some lengths to get this beautiful thing. And I am pleased that I did now because I really like it. So Hilary tells me she's got angels that are flying. She's got angels that are standing up and that are vertical and some that are horizontal. And everything that she wants on her tables, because they're long tables, she wanted them into either a ceramic or a Terracotta, uh, terracotta trough. So, Hillary, what I've done is I'm going to go the shabby chic way, but you can just make it, which use whatever container you want, and the size or the the cavity and the, the container is going to be. You're going to have to make sure that this fits inside it. Now, because they're gold and you're having whites and pinks and blush, what I have done is I've given this a really quick shabby chicy sort of like um, finish, and I've used any. Sloan's chalk paint on the outside and then because you don't have anything from the cream container through to the gold of the angel what I've done is I've just misted around the edge of the container quite rough you don't have to be neat and tidy at all and the paint that I used is a floral life paint and I used the 24 karat gold there's three types of gold but I actually prefer this one if I'm using it. Now the other thing I need you to know when you are spraying anything that's earthenware like as in terracotta, when you put your paint on make sure that you seal where you're going to put the gold because what happens is, let me just show you, the gold comes off. Yes, it comes off. So you've got to have to seal that. Or when you've painted it, then do the sealing. Now, because it's earthen, it's uh, terracotta. I'm using terracotta. Even though it is, um, it doesn't have any drainage holes in it. What I have done is I've used just a little bit of um, cellophane in there to just stop the moisture from leaching out because it will when you put your foam into there. First step is to put your angel in or whatever statue you or figurine you're using. Now I'm not going to take it too high, Hillary, and for those of you who are doing table flowers, don't take it too high because don't forget that somebody's going to be sitting there and I have been to lots of functions where I've been like this or like this trying to talk to the person on the other side of the table. Now from there, the next thing is, is to put, so, oops, and I didn't get my scissors out, oh, my knife out. Oh, for goodness sake, I don't even know. Oh, hold on, can't find the knife. So when all else fails, a bit of wire will do. It's just a matter now of cutting your foam and pushing that down into your container and I'm going to have to just cut and tuck as I go here. Hopefully that bit there will fit in. Yes, it does. And then with that bit there, I'll just cut that bit off. What did they say? Mother is the invention or the necessity of invention. I, like, I quite like that saying. Right, just push that down into there. Now, all of this can be done in advance. Now, if you wanted to, you could perhaps put a little bit of moss on top of that just to cover. I love this moss, look at it, it looks like parsley. Look at that, it's quite lovely stuff. And if you don't have any of any moss, what you could do is use some little baby tears and you could put those over the top of the surface of your wet foam. Do it a couple of weeks in advance and what will happen, or even if you can, longer than that because the baby tears will start growing and that can be a nice look as well. As I'm doing this I'm thinking gosh if you didn't want to use roses beautiful succulents could be beautiful in here or you might even like to add like plant that put some soil in there and plant that up with some little bedding plants like some alyssum, some little pansies, maybe you'd like to put in some little fern. You could also just do the whole base under here in gypsophila but Hilary has asked if I could incorporate 
some hydrangeas and she was using blush hydrangeas. Um, I've had a problem finding blush at this particular time of our season because they're only just starting to turn. But look at how beautiful they are. I just Hydrangeas, I think, are one of the most wonderful flowers to be designing with. Beautiful round shapes. And when you look into them, all those beautiful, beautiful little petals or individual little flowers in there, they're just glorious. Right, cutting those. I'm going to leave the leaves on at this stage. And that's a bit high. So I don't, I want the flowers, and I think, Hilary, when you do it, it'll depend on what you want, but I just sort of thought that it would be nice to have the flowers, sort of the angel just sort of like, is looking as if she's flying through the flowers. Sort of like that. Now here is, I'll put this one here, and I'm slant cutting everything. Just pushing that into there like that and it's nice with those leaves so you don't need to worry about the texture on the outside of your container really because it's, the flowers are going to cover it anyway putting that into there like that and if you wanted to add another color I will add this into there oh, that's that is a beautiful color isn't it and I love it there's the colors and the hydra the other thing reason why I love hydrangeas is they just last such a long time. Okay, I've got one more of, uh, do I want that one? No, I think I might just bring this one down into here like so. And because you wanted something that was a little bit shabby cheeky, I'm not even going to worry about, normally what I would do is with the colour here, I would bring another one down there. But actually I will because I've got it. And when you're picking hydrangeas, pick them, I usually pick them at night, slant cut them, and some I just put the and slant cut under warm water, and then put them in right up to their heads in water. If anything droops, just discard it because it, even if you put it into hot water, it still doesn't work. Now the other thing I needed to tell you about the hydrangeas is at a certain point in the season, usually a good six weeks after they've been in bloom, you prob. I hope that you can see that, but when you look into the little flower here, the little four leaf florets, you'll see a little wee thing in the middle there. See that little thing there? That always reminds me of a little cross or a little, uh, yeah, just like a little cross. When that is firmly fixed and doesn't fall off, you know that your hydrangea is going to stay, but you can normally tell anyway. Okay, so that, I'm going to, I am going to bring one down into there just to diffuse that colourway. And it's really beautiful because when I look into this one round here, I can see the, it's got a little bit of rust on it, but I don't care about that. But you've got like little bits of blue when you look into it and there's little tinge of pink and they all sort of like blend and harmonize and when I look into the top of the wings here and the different golds I can see those colors sort of like being reflected through to there okay so now from there I'll just pinch some of the roses from here just to give you an idea of what I'm doing and it's just a matter once you get your roses it's just a matter of just inserting your little roses down on top of your foam like so in a pattern and I think that by using the hydrangeas what is really lovely I'm going to put that one over there by using the hydrangeas you can you it covers everything and it's a beautiful visual on its own and then you that way you don't need to use too many flowers but these you just just poke these in as you just as you would want and I'm just thinking that you know just just keep going until you have put in as many roses as you like so it's a really quick and easy cost effective way of producing a design for on a table and the other thing about doing t this type of table design is if you're doing say 20 of these for a table you can give them to special people to take home so Hilary I hope that I have been of assistance I really really love this idea and I hope that for those of you who are watching that this is inspired you to do something really beautiful, quick and simple and form and function for your wedding table centrepieces. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again another day.